Siddhartha Gautama, the person who was to become the Buddha, was born in a country we now call Nepal. King Sudodhana, his father, was the wealthy ruler of the Shakya clan, and the young prince was brought up in great comfort and luxury. Shortly after Siddhartha was born, his father was visited by a wise man called Asita. Asita foretold that the baby prince would grow up to be either a great king, like his father, or a great holy man. Now this worried the king. He wanted Siddhartha to follow in his footsteps, to become a great ruler. He didn't want him to live a religious life. He had the future all planned out for his son. The king decided that the best thing to do was to make sure his son had such a comfortable life that he would never want anything else. He provided his son with everything he could possibly wish for and also gave orders that the prince should be shielded from anything that might upset or worry him. People who were old or ill were not allowed into the palace. And so it was that Prince Siddhartha grew up surrounded by luxuries, untroubled by any of the unpleasant things of life. When he was still a young man, he was married to the beautiful Princess Yashodara, and they had a baby son. Life should have been perfect, but somehow Siddhartha wasn't entirely happy. Despite having everything he could wish for, his life seemed empty and rather pointless and the luxurious palace felt almost like a prison. One day, despite his father's orders that he should stay inside the palace grounds, he decided to go out into the nearby city. Prepare my horse and chariot, he called to Chanda, his chariot driver. I want to visit Kapilavastu. And so Siddhartha left the confines of the palace and went into the city. They hadn't gone very far when they came across an old man shuffling across the road. His back was bent and his eyes were dim. His hair and his teeth had fallen out and he looked weary and frail. Stop the chariot, called the prince. He looked at the old man. What has happened to this man? He asked Chanda. Why, he's just very old, replied the chariot driver. You may be young and healthy now, but everyone eventually grows old and loses their strength. Siddhartha was shocked. Take me back to the palace, he said. But the prince's restlessness didn't go away, and it wasn't long before he set off again for the city. This time, as they drove along, Siddhartha saw a pale and wasted figure lying by the roadside, groaning in pain. Stop the chariot, said the prince. He looked at the sick person. What's wrong with that woman? He asked Chanda. She's ill, replied the chariot driver. Unfortunately, no one escapes sickness. Everyone gets ill at some time in their life. Again, Siddhartha was shocked at what he'd seen and returned to the palace. But the prince could not settle, and it wasn't long before he asked Chanda to take him to the city again. This time, as they drove along, they saw a dead man being carried through the streets in a funeral procession. Again, Siddhartha asked Chanda to stop the chariot, and he watched as the sad procession passed slowly by. Death has come, said Chanda. Young or old, rich or poor, everyone has to die sometime. Silently, the prince returned to the palace. King Sudodhana had tried to hide all the unpleasant aspects of life from the prince. But in fact, no one can be protected from old age, sickness and death. These sights made a huge impact on Prince Siddhartha. They set him thinking and he couldn't ignore the questions they raised in his mind. He wanted to know why there is old age, sickness and death. Why everyone has to suffer unhappiness at some point in their life. Was there an escape from this seemingly inevitable suffering? How could he find an answer? For one last time, Siddhartha asked Chanda to drive the chariot into the city. This time, 
what he saw was quite different. There, walking calmly through the crowd, was a man dressed only in rags and carrying a begging bowl. The prince was struck by his calm and peaceful appearance. Who is this man who seems so at peace with himself? asked the prince. That is a wandering holy man, a truth seeker, explained Chanda. They have few possessions and no home, but live in the forest or wander from place to place. And yet he looks so happy, thought Siddhartha. Perhaps that is the way for me to find an answer to my questions.